Hi, I'm Michelle Bege with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. A new living species has been discovered in the Galapagos Islands this week. To which family does it belong to? We'll have the answer later. In Chile, Gabriel Boric was sworn in as president. Big changes are expected. The former student activist has assembled a feminist cabinet. 14 of the 24 new ministers are women. Boric's government will oversee a referendum for a new constitution, which is currently being rewritten by a constitutional assembly. For more on this story and the challenges to come, let's go to my colleague Joel Richards. This is a new era for Chile, a reshaping of the country's politics of the last three decades. Gabriel Boric is Chile's youngest ever president, and he heads a generational shift in the country's leadership. Many of those now in government were born in a country that had transitioned to democracy after General Pinochet's rule. They were activists during the student protests a decade ago, and now they guide the country in a new direction. When outlining his vision for Chile, Bodic speaks of the priorities of the 2020s, climate change, gender inequality, mental health, the rights of indigenous communities. But Chile is still reconciling the 2019 social protests over inequality and is drafting a new constitution. So if we add in the post-pandemic economic recuperation, the challenges start to add up for the new president. Maintaining economic growth that has characterized Chile in recent years while increasing taxes to pay for social spending is just one of them. So too, dealing with an immigration crisis in the north. He faces a divided Senate, so implementing new legislation will not be straightforward. And while there is a great feeling of hope amongst many Chileans who want change, there are other sectors that will give strong opposition to his government. Boric himself has said they will go slowly because they want to go far. But uniting the country and living up to the expectations will be a test. A landslide on Tuesday morning buried dozens of homes in a village in northern Peru. An undetermined number of people are trapped. The governor of the La Libertad region, where the town of Retamas is, said between 60 and 80 houses were affected by the avalanche. Rescuers and local volunteers are working to remove the debris and locate possible survivors. And Colombia held its congressional elections last weekend. This set the tone for the upcoming presidential elections. The results prove the country is divided, as no party coalition was able to win a majority in Congress. The only winner seemed to be left-winged former Bogota mayor Gustavo Petro. He won his party coalition primaries with more votes than any other candidate did with their political parties. This may reveal a new trend for the traditionally conservative Colombia. And check out these images of the celebrations for an Argentine family who just finished a 22-year journey across five continents. The couple, Herman and Candelaria, began the journey in 2000 in a 1928 Jollipee. They gave birth to four children on their trek through the U.S., Canada, Australia and their native Argentina. The total distance they drove, 362,000 kilometers. Now let's take a look at what stories we're following for next week. First, in Peru, Congress voted in favor of a second attempt to impeach its president, Pedro Castillo. Members of the opposition party accused Castillo of corruption and being morally unfit to be president. Castillo or his court representatives will have to go to Congress on March 28th to present their defense. Lawmakers will then have a debate and hold a final vote on the impeachment. And second, in Mexico, 5,000 members of the Zapatista National Liberation Army took part in a protest against Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. The women and men held a march wearing their traditional black ski masks. The protest was held in Chiapas, where their movement began in 1994 to defend indigenous rights. And now the answer to our news trivia. The answer is B. A new species of the giant tortoise was discovered in the Galapagos. DNA tests prove that animals living on one of the islands had never been recorded and described. More than 8,000 tortoises now living actually belong to a different lineage. Experts now understand that the Galapagos Islands are home to two different types of tortoises, the ones living in the highlands and the others living in the lowlands. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.